So let's do a quick review of the Xeon 1231 V3. So this is the Haswell refresh of the Xeon CPUs. Welcome back to Tech Yes, it is Brian coming back to you guys today with a quick review of the Xeon 1231 V3. Now this review is going to be more focused on using this CPU for the end home user. That is someone who's going to use it in a workstation, a gaming PC and or both. Uh, me specifically, I recently built this rig in the background uh, that I did a whole build guide using this CPU uh, for a hybrid gaming workstation and it performed really well. And so we're going to quickly go through what you get in the box. Then we'll run some quick benchmarks against the 4670K because that's, that's mainly, I think that's the main competition that this is going up against. And then I'll do a quick conclusion and rundown for you guys. So the Xeon 1231 V3 is essentially a refresh of the Haswell CPUs that they decided to do because of the delays in Broadwell. Now specifically with this CPU, you essentially get a base clock of 3.4 gigs, which is 100 megahertz higher than the previous Gen 1230 V3. Uh, also, the turbo clock enables this to go up to 3.8 gigs uh, on two cores and 3.6 gig on all cores. Though if you've got the right BIOS and the right motherboard, and I'm specifically pointing to this B85 Pro Gamer here, you'll be able to get this thing up to 3.8 gigs on all cores. Now, unfortunately for me, it doesn't go any higher because there's no option to up the B clock. I think that's disabled on most B85 and H87 boards. Uh, I think you need specifically a cave CPU to unlock that feature, which is a little bit disappointing because I like to extract as an enthusiast the most value I can out of my products. And I certainly know that this thing running at 3.8 gigs at 0.99 volts is certainly able to get up to 4 gigahertz at the very least with a 105 uh, megahertz speed on the base clock. However, let's talk about also the product. Essentially, you're getting a CPU with eight megabytes of level three money on board, uh, a little bit more than the 4670K. So in the box, you get the CPU, which comes packaged just like any other CPU. You get the manual with a three-year warranty. And more, most interestingly enough, you get a, the better variant of the two heat sinks that are Intel are offering with the four cores. So this one has the copper base plate. It's a little bit heavier than the cheaper variant. You also get the better fan as well. So the Xeon actually has a better fan than the i7 and the i5 and the i3 variants and the Pentiums as well. Uh, so that's a good thing if you are going to just use the stock cooling on this uh, CPU, like I've done in my rig in the background here. So with this CPU as well, you also get some features that are enabled and disabled compared to the desktop variants. Though for the end home user and the average gamer, the average person doing workstation applications, it's not gonna make a difference at all. It's more for an enterprise or a large business that needs to worry about these features. So that's about it for the actual hardware side of things with this CPU. You guys are probably wondering how it performs in the benchmarks. So I'll just run through some quick benchmarks for you guys and you can see how it goes against the 4670K at 4.6 gigs. What can I say about the 1231 V3 CPU from Intel? Well, a lot of good besides the initial expensive face value of this CPU. So this thing will run you up around about $250 or more. However, besides that, the CPU, in my opinion, just synergizes the best out of any Intel Haswell CPU out there. You can couple it with a cheap B85 motherboard, get it to 3.8 gigs, on the stock heatsink fan, and then get some cheap DDR3 memory, and you're good to go. You're gonna be doing uh, workstation applications absolutely fine, you're gonna be gaming absolutely fine, and you're gonna get that low power consumption, which is gonna keep uh, 
temperatures down in your rig as well as in your actual house as well and it's going to keep a little bit of savings on the power bill now that depends on where you live and i have been criticized about saying i should stop talking about power savings but i can't because i pay like 35 cents a kilowatt hour and it actually adds up for me so a cpu like this has a lot of benefits and not a lot of disadvantages now i will say one thing and that is who is this for essentially it's for someone who is just looking for a really balanced cpu for the money uh, how does it compare against the 4670k well in armor 3 it doesn't do as well in planet side 2 it doesn't do as well however in those multi-threaded games it does edge out the 4670k at 4.6 gigs which was an impressive feature with the cpu and then when it came to workstation applications it again edged out the 4670k whilst using a lot less power not requiring a z97 or z87 uh, motherboard and also using less power than the 4670k so ultimately it does get my approval if you're looking for a better variant of the 4670k now it's benefits as well it's also doesn't one thing to mention that i forgot to mention in the review as well it doesn't have the onboard uh, HD graphics are enabled on this particular CPU. So you will not be able to use QuickSync as well as not having a graphics card option there if you're not using a main graphics card. Say for instance, your graphics card um, is faulty and you need to send it back and you need to use a rig in the meantime, that HD graphics can come in handy. The benefit of not having it on board is you're using slightly less power again because it's just completely disabled. Uh, so that's with the HD Gravis Quick Sync, though, is, uh, I, I hear it's gaining a lot of traffic traction for uh, streaming. So if you're a streamer, then you may wish to look at the 4790K or the 4770 or 4790, because they have the HD Gravis, which will enable you to use Quick Sync. So now's the big question. Should you get this, or should you get the FX8320, or should you get the 4670K? And that depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for the best performance on those CPU intensive games that are predominantly single threaded, Planet Side 2 uh, comes to mind, also Armor 3 comes to mind, then you're probably going to want to get a 4670K and overclock the living shit out of it. But if, it, if you're looking for something that's, and you're on a real budget and you're doing work staples, workstation applications, then you may wish to get an FX8320 for $100 or $120, get it on a cheap motherboard, and utilize those eight cores. Uh, though if you're looking for something that sort of is the jack of all trades, master of none, uh, except for performance per watt, it is the master of that, then you're looking at the 1231V3. It's a good CPU that does gaming really well. It's a good CPU that does workstation applications really well. And it all does that whilst using the least amount of power possible. So I do like this CPU and I do like where it's at, especially for someone like me. So it depends on who you are at the end of the day. I also like um, being a little bit different. Not everyone's using a Xeon, especially on a B85 motherboard. So I kind of like where this CPU is at the moment. Uh, I would like to see it a little bit cheaper possibly. That's always a great thing. And I would like to see Intel enable B clock over or base clock overclocking on this so I can get a little bit more performance out of this CPU. That'd be a great feature to have and I'd like to see them do that, especially since they have been doing some good things with the 5820K and the 3258. So I'd just like to see them uh, enable B clock overclocking. I mean, there's pretty much no reason not to enable it. People know what it is. They know the feature. They know it can be dangerous. So uh, just enable it, please. Give us enthusiasts a chance to get a bit more performance out of this thing. So anyway, guys, that's about it for the 1231v3. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the 1231, v3 then leave a comment in the comment section below another thing to mention too is if you're getting this motherboard there's only one revision of the bios that will work to get it to 3.8 gigs it's the first bios released i've tested all the other biases out and they don't get it to 3.8 gigs so that's something you might want to think about as well maybe if you've got a b85 motherboard only one particular bios revision will be able to get it up to 3.8 gigs and hey it's an extra 200 megahertz of performance so you deserve it uh, anyway, guys, that's about it. I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.